wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are, on the face of this very planet today, we are welcoming you to another exciting edition of Radio Biafra Broadcast. This is a live presentation. This is a live address. We are coming to you live and direct, regardless of where you are domiciled. We say on this very 16th day of May, the month we remember the heroic sacrifice of our people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. We are live, we are direct, and we are coming to you with the only pure, incontrovertible truth ever spoken on radio. Therefore, I welcome you, and as I do so, I will also urge you to welcome those of them who are around you, especially friends of Biafra and non-friends of Biafra alike. And also traitors are welcome to listen, that they may hopefully repent from their sad evil ways because this very march is relentless there is nothing anybody can do to deter us there is nothing the combined forces of all evil on this earth can do to stop the inevitability of the restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth that Piafra has come to represent. Every proclamation here is done under divine mandate. That is why everything we say comes to pass and that is why when we say that Biafra will come in our time, be rest assured that Biafra will come. With the time now standing at approximately 2 minutes past 7 p.m. in Biafra land and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are on this very earth, I welcome you once again. My name is Nandi Kanu. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, and by the special grace of Chukokita Elohim, Almighty God in heaven, I am and will remain a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. This is a test of what is to come. Because in the next couple of days, I will be in the United States of America and I will also be touring Canada. We are the same gospel will be preached before a privileged audience of the children of Biafra. That Biafra may come in our time, that Chukuki Kabiyama may have mercy upon us. We are on www.radiobiafra.co Radiobiafra.co We are on www.ipob.org We are also on Biafra Telegraph I repeat, BiafraTelegraph.co and a host of other platforms as well. But most principally, we are on Radio Biafra app. It's very special. If you have not downloaded it, I recommend very strongly that you do so without hesitation. We are coming to you live and direct. And you can listen to this very broadcast via Radio Biafra app. We are on satellite as well. Those of you with satellite access can listen to Radio Biafra. We are also coming to you via a plethora of relay stations across Biafra land on 102.1, 102.2, depending on where you are. We are also simulcasting this very broadcast on Facebook. 
If you go to Radio Biafra, the official, the authentic Radio Biafra page, you will be able to listen to us and participate in this very program this evening. There are a host of fake Radio Biafra platforms designed by our enemies and run by saboteurs to pry to misinform our people. But we are on top of it. And that is why those of you who are discerning enough must be able to distinguish between the authentic platform of Radio Biafra and what our enemies are serving up. If you have not joined us before, I ask you to do so today. If you have never participated in our programming, then I can assure you, you are missing quite a lot. Because here, the only thing we speak is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That is why Elohim always bears us witness. That is why everything we say, every proclamation here always comes to pass. Some people accuse us of not taking our people along from the coastal region. And I say to them this evening that they are grossly misinformed because the IPOB family is intact. And there is nothing anybody can do to render us asunder. We are broadcasting in a quiet bomb this very evening. Those on satellites, on Radio Biafra app can listen across the entire Cross River. In Bielsa, we are on CHK 102.2. In Igbo, the same. They want the name for Takot. How sad the name is Igbo, We are in Asaba. And everywhere else, you find their friends congregating this very evening. You can be rest assured they are listening to Radio Biafra. Before we proceed, we must pray. We must call upon Chukukika Biama Premiere. Some people are concerned that the name of God Almighty in heaven should not be pronounced in the language of the Asians. Somehow that makes this an ego platform. And I say to them that they are wrong. Because Elohim is God Almighty. El Shaddai is God Almighty. So is Chupotika Biyama. So is Abasimbon. So is Tamuno. All these are our languages. And in whatever language that you have chosen, I can assure you that the Most High will accept our prayers very humbly this evening. Therefore, we must pray. And as those before us have done, those that we are blessed and ordained to bring down the kingdom of heaven down to this very earth, so shall we do this very evening. Therefore, we ask, Almighty God in heaven, the creator of the universe, the only one that created everything that is made, but no one created him. Everything you made bow before the, the sun, the moon, and the stars testify to your presence. Even the Elohim, you feel the best of the air. Only you dictate time, space, and infinity. Because you encompass all of your creation. We come to thee very humbly in absolute and total submission to your will to hand over our proceedings as we do every blessed day unto your tender care that Biafra may come not through our might nor our power but by your divine grace upon the lives of those that you created especially to bring light into the darkness that Africa has become. Therefore, we plead with thee to make haste to Elohim to deliver your children of Biafra, to come to us very quickly, to help us 
and to put our enemies to shame and confusion that seek to destroy your handiwork. Let them be turned back and put to confusion that desire to hurt your children. Come and chase all our enemies back. Let them be turned back for the reward of their shame. Those that laugh at us. But let all of us that seek thee, this very noble family of IP, be the world over. With joy and gladness in our hearts, have we sought your salvation? And that is why we say continually and ceaselessly, let the name of the Most High be exalted. Let the name of God Almighty be magnified. Let the name of Elohim be uplifted. Because we are poor and needy. Please come to us very quickly. O oh, creator of the universe, we need your help and your deliverance. Please hurry and do not delay, for we have no other God apart from thee. We do not worship idol. We do not worship anything that the hands of men made. We do not worship anything at all that is the creation of a living being. Because all flesh are immortal. Because everything that is made must face destruction. Then you are indestructible. You are immortal. You are God the creator. That is why every praise, every adoration, every honor and every glory shall belong to your holy name and be alone. Forever and ever we pray. He said, he said, he said, this very evening, if you're joining us for the very first time, this is the platform where the truth is spoken. I will tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. The enemies can lie. The devil can lie all it can. Lucifer may seek to deceive, but here we are determined and we are resolute. Our mission is very simple, to restore Biafra to his former glory, to ensure that the kingdom of heaven is experienced by the children of men on this very earth. We are not going to stop. Absolutely nothing will stop us. They couldn't stop us before. When they came and killed and pillaged, they were unable to stop us. They couldn't stop us when I was in detention, incarcerated, solitary confinement, torture and pain. I welcome you back, wonderful people of Biafra. There was a slight and rude interruption which we have managed to rectify because the forces of darkness would not wish to hear this very broadcast this very evening but we are proceeding the time now is approaching 23 minutes past 7 pm in biafra land and the same number of minutes past every top of the hour wherever you are domiciled around the world we are live and we are direct and nothing, I repeat, absolutely nothing will stop us from disseminating this very important information this evening that we have prayed. Therefore, we must move speedily ahead into this very address this evening. One second is a live presentation. We are live on all platforms of Radio Biafra. We are reaching every time zone, every country on the planet Earth. It doesn't matter where you are, if you wish to join us, you should be able to do so. Because the greatest threat to freedom is not just the oppressor, but a population that is happy in slavery and servitude. Nigerians, it appears, and certain individuals with Biafran names, I would say, 
love slavery. We in IPOB don't. This very one and only IPOB, we do not love slavery. We shall do everything we can to be free. I, like most other compatriots of mine in IPOB, prefer dangerous freedom to peaceful slavery. Until Biafra is completely set free, we shall continue to agitate because, to me and to others as well, freedom means the ability to be yourself every day of your life and not to be pushed around by anybody. Freedom is about living without mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual shackles or constraints. And if I feel that my rights and that of their friends are being violated the same way they are being violated today, then I will consider it a massive violation to my God-given right to live in freedom. Therefore, I will resist it. Therefore, I will agitate. And that is why we do what we do. Some of you may have noticed that the imposter called Jibril, who was criminally imported into the Darbu Zoological Republic, has only recently returned from his surgery enhancement in the United Kingdom. Jibril al Sudani, the replacement of the dead late Buhari that the cabals brought in traveled a few weeks ago without informing their toothless and useless senate in clear violation and contravention of all the prints and protocol laid down in their useless constitution. But unfortunately for Jubril, this time around, he he did not travel with his makeup artist. Because if you see the of Jubril returning from London, where he was met by Bukola Saraki, the Senate president, as he was disembarking from the aircraft, you will know there is something definitely wrong with Nigerians and their eyesight. I want that very picture to be published, or should I say pictures to be published, for anybody to tell me this very morning, afternoon, evening, or night, depending on where you are, to tell me that that very human being, that thing you're looking at, is Buhari. You know that Buhari is dead. Have a look at the picture. I want that picture published on my Facebook page and shared everywhere as well. Publish it on every platform available. Ask gullible Nigerians, is this very man Buhari to you? Because Buhari is dead. But they keep covering up the obvious and the thing that diverting our attention with the mayhem and killings perpetrated by Miyeti Allah through their armed wing, the Fulani headsmen will be able to put us off. But they are mistaken. You will see in this very picture that Jubil is now looking as young as Yusuf, the real son of Buhari. That thing you're looking at now is meant to be nearly 76 years old. Look at that picture again and tell me if that is the picture of a 76-year-old man. No, it is not. You can see it very clearly. Then ask yourself this very simple question. Why is it that people that claim that they are the elite, they are enlightened, that they believe in normal, civilized, political discourse? Why would they allow such a travesty to happen? Only them knows. 
Now when we call Nigeria a zoo, you'll understand the reason why. I want people to look at that very picture and tell me this evening, this picture was taken not just a few days ago. Tell me if that is Buhari to you. Explain it to your children. Tell them that this is Buhari. All those criminal pastors who are supporting Jibril and the slaughter of the innocent. Look at that very picture and tell me that that is the Buhari that you used to know. You will see that the truth is very, very obvious. Because it is not. Because Buhari is dead and they brought in somebody from Sudan. But they have used the Yotiyala to slaughter all of you into stupor. That is why you cannot rise up. That is why the entire so-called south of Nigeria is now littered with cowards who cannot rise up to speak the truth. Cowards everywhere they are. Please take a look at that very picture of the Sudanese being received by Bukola Saraki and one other man, they don't know his name, and tell me that that very thing you're looking at is the dictator, the dead late dictator, buried in Saudi Arabia, Muhammad Buhari. Jubil went for his periodic body work. You know the periodic overhaul that he does to make him look like Buhari. But this time they got it wrong because the metal practice did not go with them. That's why they sent the young man without his full makeup. They think we have forgotten. I will also do another program on the eve of their useless inauguration. On the 28th, I will be in the USA and I will do a live broadcast for the world to know that Jubil is from Sudan in Postal that they have allowed to bamboozle them. That is how useless, weak, and cowardly your so-called Nigerians are. Nigeria is a country where you see no evil and you hear no evil. That is why evil can reign morning till night, week to week, month to month, year to year. Everybody pretends all is normal when it's clearly not long. This is the man they are planning to swear in on the 29th of this very month. The dead Buhari did not have basic, confirmable school certificate. This same man now from Sudan that they rigged into office, running on behalf of Buhari, does not have any confirmable Wayek certificate. Whereas evidence after evidence has been presented to the general public, to the judiciary, and to those that claim they are the officials of the Federal Republic of the Damnable Zoological Republic, and even as citizens, we have proved it on this platform time and time again that the dead Buhari forged his certificate. This same Jubil they brought in to impose on all of you claiming is Buhari does not have any certificate and therefore should not be sworn into office. But the opposition is weak in Nigeria. The people that claim they are Nigerians, they are not one people, whereas the Sudanese can come out on the street to protest. Nigerians cannot do so because Nigeria is not a country. Even the name Nigeria doesn't exist. It's a made-up name. Nobody is a Nigerian. Instead of them to address these cardinal issues that is responsible for their backwardness and primitivity, they keep chasing shadows. Because all they are interested in is who gets into office. Who looks for his village? Who looks for his family? That's all they are bothered about. You see them, they write very fanciful grammar. You think they are learned, you think they are educated, but they are hollow, they are empty. There is nothing inside them. Look at those pictures I want. I am telling all the E warriors of IPOB to make sure that this very picture is everywhere. The question is very simple. Ask anybody you're sending it to. 
please is this buhari does this look like buhari to you and you hear their answer then why are you swearing this thing in on the on the 29 a sudanese why are you swearing him in the nigerian police the legislature and the executive arms of the government all full of minds mind you are all aware yet nothing is done to effect or to sustain the legitimacy of the rule of law by enforcing the requirements the constitutionally laid down requirements that anybody seeking for the office of the president of nigeria must have a certificate that is the law that is the law but they don't obey the law that was the constitution that everybody swore to uphold every police officer every judge every executive office every political appointee they swore maybe it's because it's, it should have been written in, in arabic perhaps some of them would have been able to understand it the law is very simple there is no circumventing it where is your certificate if you don't have any certificate why are you being sworn in so now you understand that nigeria is a fraud you know in the zoo they keep reversing things remember they knew what we were saying about the fraudulent creation of nigeria the british zoo they turned around and they started calling us we are fraud you are committing fraud and we asked them where is the fraud we committed by exposing your shambolic foundations the same way they thought the ipa the terrorist group but me yet is not do you see how they reason in the zoo so they try to get in their own first so you'll be fighting a defensive battle without knowing that they are the ones who are guilty and should be charged as such that was the reason why before they continued they knew that buhari was going to die of course we knew he would die in office because everybody from Connaught always dies in office you will die there if you're from Sokoto, from 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 Katsina, from Kanu, from all those, you know the north, what I call the core north, not Middle Belt, not Southern Canada. They always die in office or they are removed from office. They never ever completed their tenure. Go and check your history. They never did. That was why they insisted that come hell or high water, the dead Buhari must complete his term. That's what they, they what they have done is to hold series of meetings to decide that this jinx must be broken by the dead Buhari. That is why Aisha is going along with it. These are facts. If you doubt me that Buhari is dead, go and have a look today at the picture, the latest picture of Jubril returning from the UK. You will see and tell me that is Buhari. He looks as young as Yusuf, Buhari's real son. But some of you when i say it now they say i insult black people but believe you me uh, there must be something wrong with us i am telling you the truth even if we cannot speak can our eyes also deceive us the answer is no just go and have a look <laughs> but yoruba media will not report it because they want a yoruba man in 2023 that's all they care about forget about the 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 the, the, the morals of upholding the rule of law i'm not interested it's only to have access to control oil and gas uh, um, um, resources, that's all. But they're journalists. They too swore to write the truth, but they will never write it. Because they are compromised. Or maybe because that's how Africans are, which is the very things we're trying to break ourselves in Biafra. By trying to prove to the world that uh, not every African society is as useless as Africa is today. They are fighting us, but we are overcoming them one after the other. Evidence of the forgery of Buhari's certificate abound is everywhere. Everybody knows that, knows that. Can you ask yourself this question? Why was it that a tribunal was constituted to resolve the issue 
of who won the elections, and up until now, there is no pronouncement. None whatsoever. Because the deal is done. Britain has given approval. Therefore, anybody will give you, if we bring a goat or a cow to say this cow is Buhari, he must rule all of you, that cow will rule. You are nothing. But unfortunately, the Yoruba race is going along with this. Now they understand why it will be very, very difficult to build a country with them. We like people who are honest and straightforward. People who, people that hold on tenaciously to their core beliefs without compromise. We don't compromise. I don't compromise. But they all do. That is why entering into an alliance with them would be very, very difficult. Almost impossible. Tell me how, because of perhaps eight years of oil money, eight years in office, you jettison every principle that you once held very dear. Is that how you build a nation? Is that how you build a country? Is that how you raise the people? What sort of morals are you passing to the upcoming generation? I ask. What are you passing on to them? When there is deception everywhere. Everywhere. How dumb can Nigerians be and their miserable law enforcement and judiciary. When written laws are made not to apply to a section of the population, like the Fulani, the law doesn't apply to them in Nigeria. Then that makes every it makes everybody a fool when you, you make laws and it doesn't apply to a section of the population. Who is more corrupt than Fulani people? But they are the ones running EFCC. They are running EFCC, arresting everybody else, but not their own. You see how clever they are? And some of you idiots from the so-called South Nigeria, you go along with the nonsense of EFCC. How about Ibrahim Lamode? Have you forgotten Ibrahim Lamode? The former EFCC chairman, where is he? How much did he steal? You cannot even begin to pronounce the amount he stole. Where is he? Where is Maina? Where is the uh, uh, Baba Chalawa, the grass cutter? Where are all these people? Some of you don't reason very well. That is my concern with most Nigerians. And they say I'm arrogant. I insult them. I insult you because you can't reason very well. Uh, they will come back and say, is, is you people who, who are con men? And I say, have we defrauded you before? The answer is no. Have you defrauded us? before the answer is yes from the beginning now you that is defrauding us you call us fraud can you believe such nonsense as i said earlier like talking ipo be a terrorist group when we hate yala that's actually doing the killing all over the place that everybody knows is somehow uh, uh, they are struggling for water resources so their cattle can drink do you see how the reason now you begin to understand it we are pursuing criminals and they turn around to say that we are criminals. Can you believe such rubbish? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I am afraid for the dwindling thinking capacity of your average miserable Nigerian. That is why they're committing suicide all over the place. Instead of them to come out and protest and rally and say that evil is evil, instead they go into their bedrooms and they commit suicide. People come out on the streets all over the world, in Venezuela, everywhere around the world, in Sudan, to say that evil is evil. In the case of the zoo, they go into the room and they drink up their beer and that's it. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. My goodness. This is the type of country some people shamelessly wake up to every morning to defend. Especially some people answering their friend names, they write for their Yoruba masters and their Awusa masters. They write junk, defending what is in effect indefensible. Ask them this simple question. This picture you're looking at this evening, this evening of the 16th of May, does this look like Buhari to you? And how can you be swearing in somebody on the 29th of May that has no certificate as required by law by the constitution. 
They can't answer. Instead, they can't be writing. Oh, they are causing trouble. They are rabble rousers. They are, they are trying to drag everybody into problem. But you, you wrote the laws. The law is very clear. It's clear. It's there. School certificate. Where is your school certificate? If you don't have it, you don't run for office. If you don't have it, you cannot be sworn in. Why are they trying to say, why are they trying to run around it all of a sudden? And you wonder why Africa is poor. You wonder why people are dying walking through the desert. You wonder why we are drowning in the Mediterranean. This is the type of nonsense you allow to exist in society. You cannot uphold the law. And you want light. You want running water. You want good roads. You are insane. You cannot have any of those things. Because as I keep telling people, saying people all the time, anytime you travel abroad and you see lights 24 hours a day, good roads, there is a disciplined population that runs such a place. So when the road is bad, they fix it. They know it is their duty to fix it and they must fix it. Do you think these things fall from heaven? Can you go to school and pass if you don't have the discipline to wake up every day and go to school to study or to take your lectures? How can you pass? Is that possible? You don't obey what is written in your own constitution and you want light, you want good roads and good education. You are insane. You're not well. You must go back to the drawing board. You must go back to the drawing board. You swear in Jubilee on the 29th. Whatever hope. In fact, you see what Mietiana will do to all of you. Yeah, right, they will be there. Write it down on a piece of paper. If I speak, write it down. The colonization agenda will be complete before four years. They will do it. They have taken over the senses of some of you. That come out all the time to yap rubbish. You wake up in the morning, you talk rubbish to the evening, and you disappear. You don't contribute anything to the advancement of this very noble movement. Absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Fulani all over the place. When they come, they start to phone me. They are here. Oh, tell us, what do we do? We are the ones starting the battle. Every place is dead, if you don't know. We are the ones fighting it. Regardless of what their killer squad of 18 men to each state are doing, which I shall reveal later on in this very program. Those of you that call yourself Southern Nigeria, because sometimes they lose track of the, they lose their senses. They call themselves Southern Nigerians. You have been butchered into fear and docility. I weep for the cowards. But it's their country that can do whatever they like with it. Let us go to the proper issues of this very evening. Because I was very, very upset that some individuals, you know these people born on that bridge near Ujua You know a child, when you're born under the bridge, the first breath you take is of, is of a decaying refuse dump nearby. When a child is born on the dirty streets of Lagos, it is the dirtiest city in the world, and your first breath as a, as a newborn baby is the smell of a refuse bin nearby, or the smell of an open sewage nearby. How do you think anything good can come out of that child later on in life? All these people, they are the ones I'm addressing tonight. You know, they want to impress their, uh, they want to impress Tunde, <laughs> their Yoruba friends, their cosmopolitan. They want to show them, oh, we are, we, we love everybody. But do they love you? If they love you, they would have told that we want to return all the money he stole from my people after the war. They will campaign very seriously. For you, uh, for one of you, if you live, to become the president of the zoo, it will never happen, and you know that. That is why this evening we must respect those that fought and died for us between 67 and 70. I said must, M-U-S-T. Whether you like it or not, you must honor them. All over the world, they honor their dead. All over the world, they do their anniversary. As I told you a while ago, the end of the amnesties was one over 100 years. They remember Every year, the 11th month, no, the 11th minute, no, in fact, let me start from the the 11th second of the 11th minute of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Every year, 
come to the cenotaph, you will see her imperial majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, there, honoring those that fought and died for them. And all of you, some of you want to go to England, it's beautiful. Because there are some things that they do. These things are traditional. These are the way, some of the ways that you bind yourself with the suffering of the past. Recognize them that people died for you. Which in essence is what Christianity is all about. So what we are doing on the 30th of May is essentially what Christianity says should be done. On Easter, we remember the death of Yeshua. Don't tell anybody to do that. Why don't you say, okay, it doesn't matter? But we do. Or some of you do anyway. Now, how come those that fought and died for us in the flesh, we will not honor them? We will not lock down. Everywhere should be sealed under lock and key. Any dog staying outside should be slaughtered. Any goat that comes outside should be slaughtered. We must honor our people. We must honor them. That both the living and the dead. If you have any veteran near you, buy them a gift, buy them a present. Do some say thank you to them. Go to Judith and say thank you to them. We must honor them. We must honor them. Because it's not easy. You know, black people, we don't appreciate anybody who does anything for us for free. Because it's only in Africa that when you do something for somebody for free, you are trying to be magnanimous. They look at you as a fool. That was why we forgot our mothers that died in 1929, upholding our honor and dignity in our back. In 1949, they killed 22 people at a new group. Men that stood up to Britain. And some of you don't even know. You don't even know that. And I, I, we, we are the elite. We, we, we the intellectuals elite. A bunch of badly tutored, badly educated demons. You can't remember your mothers that did something that no other group of women did all over the world. But this November, we shall honor them. This November will make it the 100th year. Almost. Yes, it is. Is, is it 100 years? Is it 100 years? It is. 1929. Is, or is it 90 years? I think it's up to 100 years. Is it 100 years or 90 years? It's 90 years, isn't it? Because my mass is beginning to fail me. Why wouldn't it? When you're addressing a place full of people who can no longer visit. 90 years this year. We go to school, some of us go through school. We don't know that the first people to stand up against tyranny, against colonialism, against oppression, were our mothers in Abba. Some of you don't know that, do you? In 1929, and again in 1949. Go and ask yourselves this question this evening. Tell me in the history of Nigeria, we are Fulani people, we are shot dead, fighting for everybody. We are the Fulani comforted the British, and they fought. Tell me, we are the Yorubas fought the British. Then ask yourself this evening, why is it that it's only us? When Arotuku fell, in 1904, the same sons of Africa, those of you saying, uh, uh, this Biafra is an evil thing, because you are not intelligent enough. Because if you are, you will understand our history. That the present Ibibia people left Maro to do. That Abba people are actually from, from, from Ibibia, if you don't know. On reverse migration. Some of you don't know that seven sons left out on this world, traveled to Ahaba, you call Asaba, Asaba. The name is Ahaba. The same way you have Ahabi name, the name is Ahaba. A H A B A. He was the white man that called it Asaba. Saying, uh, We are, we are, we are in the uh, south south. So you don't know about Ahabi name before. The same name as Asaba you have. Ahaba, A H A B A. Seven sons from around this world have traveled to Ahaba. To form the feared, respected, and dreaded Ekumiku. Go and ask your history teacher, they will tell you. 
So I don't need to come out on Radio Biafra to make play of the fact that uh, we need to all come together because we are one people already. One people already. Go and look at the history of a Kumeku. We face the British every inch of the way. That is why they hate us, if you don't know. We resisted them in 1929. In 1949, these are historically documented facts. From 1901 to 1902, the anglo arab wars we have fought. We've been fighting the British every inch of the way. But when they went to Fulani land, they opened up, hey, come in, rank at anything you want, you can take. That's why they said, oh, these ones are more obedient. They are more obedient monkeys. No, not those ones who are rascals from the East. That's why they hate us, if you don't know, let me tell you. Let's make Nigeria one. We must continue. We must remind ourselves about how we got to where we are today. I want to introduce a perspective which I read today on social media that guided my thought this evening. Now listen very carefully to understand how things play out in this zoo called Nigeria. And how foolish they are. How foolish they are. All these people that claim that they know we are the elite, they know nothing. They are useless. All they care about is uh, uh, chicken change from contract. There is no honor, there is no dignity. That is why they think Namdekan is like them. Because they've gone to government to go and collect money. So they think somehow Namdekan must have done something. No, I cannot do it. I have not done it. That is why I speak with divine authority. Come out and say it so that the world can hear. That is why we are incorruptible. Whiter than white and whiter than snow. Don't make things up in your brain because that is how you are. You think you can run to your hands. You do some sabo work. For them, informant, you are informant, you are a pointer for DSS and for police to be arresting your people. You think others are like you? No, we are not. We are the divine children of heaven. We don't play such silly games, and you will all pay very dearly for it. You know it is going to happen. If you betray this very cause, you will pay dearly for it. You and your family will pay eventually. That is guaranteed. As night follows day, it will happen. It doesn't matter who you are, because our hands are clean. We want to set everybody free, so that you can have your own Biafra. We don't do what we do because we want to rule anybody, because I will not lead anybody, because I have suffered too much. And I would like to go and rest as soon as Biafra comes. Even before that day, I, as soon as it, I will just retire and go and rest. So don't think we are doing this because of any ulterior motive, looking for who to rule. Then you're insane. It means you don't know who we are. Because that's how you are. You think others are like you? The late Agui Ronsi, who is married to my aunt, Dad Victoria, is from Ipeku, as myself. Ironsi was the former head of state of Nigeria, a Biafran and an Igbo man. At the age of eight, he traveled from Omoana in Ndume, my mom's village, to go to the north, where he excelled and became a general in the army and accidentally became the head of state. Ironsi, listen carefully, please. Ironsi was the first battle. Um, our, our preaching today is not about Ironsi now. We just want to draw an inference to give an example as to how the brains of Nigerians work, depending on where you come from. Ironsi was the first battle-tested military general. He was a general decorated in the field for fighting battles and winning, especially in the Congo. Not like Bratai that got there through Peter and by fighting market women. You know, he said he, he wrote a book on strategies of war. <laughs> God. <laughs> How is a brave general. And I was wondering, which country did he fight in? Okay, then I remembered. It is killing unarmed Shia men along Zaria Kaduna Road. Um, massacring of IPOB family members at Head Bridge on Um, killing us at Mpoho. 
a killing loss in Abba, in Ibocha, in Enugu, and in Omaha. That makes you a general. <laughs> oh dear. We must continue. You know, the stupidity of, of these people is just um, astonishing. Honestly, astonishing. I am perplexed. A general is meant to fight a war outside the borders of his or her country. That is what makes you a general. You go and you conquer a land for the people, you bring it back to them. An African general is the one that kills ordinary unarmed civilians. And you're a general. Dear Lord, have mercy. He also was killed by Fulani people while sitting as head of state. And today nobody remembers him. Not even Biafrans, uh, uh, not even people. But he was the head of state. He was the man that foiled the coup. That would have made it possible perhaps for us to be free today he was killed alongside the yoruba man called faji it may surprise you to know that uh, yoruba is still all not faji till today I, I think it was last year or two years ago i had a lecture to honor him and i said i wholeheartedly supported it faji was a great man a very great man Maybe when the only people says that um, uh, there's a mixture of um, Igbos and Yorubas, uh, then I think maybe Fajuyi may be Igbo then. Because he's a very brave man. Died alongside Ironsi in his house in Ibadan. I think then he was the um, West, uh, the, the governor of West, military governor of Western Nigeria, whatever he was known as. He also was sworn in as a president. But Abiola was never sworn in as a president. He's a Yoruba man. He was killed by the same people that killed Yoruba, the same Flamin Caliphate as usual. But do you know that Yoruba media, Yoruba politicians, all pushed, including some Yoruba Efunefus, that June 12th must be recognized as a a democracy day in the zoo, which the, I think the few did that today, to honor Abiola. But do you know that nobody remembers Iron C? Absolutely nobody. And he was a former head of state, assassinated in office. He's a Biafran of Igbo extraction. Igbo, to be precise, where I come from, which is my clan. Today in the zoo, they passed a bill to recognize and honor June 12th because of one man. The same people pushing for one man to be honored then turned around and said that they slaughtered not 3.5 million, the six according to the Irish government. Eight million people were killed in Biafra. And you don't want us to honor 8 million people. But you want us to honor one Yoruba man. Now you see why I get angry with these people. You can now understand it. Therefore, we must honor our fathers and our mothers that fought and died for us, including the living. And all those who have been killed since this very agitation for Biafra restoration started. Therefore, we are going to sit at home on the 30th of May to remember and honor all those that we are slaughtered. Victims of Holocaust, victims of genocide, victims of starvation, including very little children. Due to air, land and sea blockade enforced by Britain, Nigeria did not defeat Biafra in any war. Britain and an alliance of the West and the East defeated Biafra. Simple as that. In a straight fight between Biafra and Nigeria, in two weeks we'll be in Sokoto. Who are they? It was Britain that fought for them. Russian weapons, Egyptian pilots, and sometimes OAU soldiers as well. That is history for you. Not Nigeria. Nigeria never ever defeated Biafra. In any war, never. It was Britain that did. 
with her alliances. We fought against the whole world for three years. That is why nobody wants to read our history. Because Britain knows where we are coming from. That we will keep pushing until Biafra comes. They understand it. It's in our DNA. To resist oppression is in our blood, is in our bone marrow. We will continue until Biafra is restored. And they know this very well. After all, throughout the whole time they were in the zoo called Nigeria, colonizing and Christianizing everywhere, we resisted them. Not because we hate them, no, but because we are Republicans by nature. We love freedom by nature. That's who we are. When I read uh, about all these Fule fools, maybe the Yorubas with Hebrew names writing rubbish for Yoruba papers. I look at them and I laugh at them because they're foolish. That refuse being, that uh, refuse being they inhaled when they were born is still disturbing their brain. I show you. I show you. The same mindset of let us accommodate others but rubbish our own is the reason why we forgot the heroic exploits of our mothers in 1929, of which this year, as I said earlier, is about the, it's the 90th anniversary, not quite the 100th yet. I think it's the 90th anniversary. From, I may be mistaken. Please have it very well for me. I want to make sure that it is the 90th anniversary and not the 100th, as I was led to believe a while ago. This mostly, I call them the FLF Brigade, wayward but slightly educated children of Biafran extraction, born outside Biafra land with a deep-seated resentment for themselves. They hate themselves and where they come from. This brigade of educated, ignorant people is the reason why, listen carefully, landlocked Kaduna has a port where containers can be transported to and collected almost free of charge if you're a Fulani, Arawa, or Hauser that Biafran cities located on the shores that in the Atlantic Ocean there is no seaport, there is no dry port. But Kaduna has a dry port. That's why the foolish Amechi rushed and built a railway for them. So they can, they can move their containers to the north and uh, of arms, ammunition, distribute to Fulani headsmen to be killing people at way from Lagos uh, seaport. Now, you can build a dry port, a dry dock in Kaduna, but worry that is on the Atlantic Ocean itself. Igbo that you named Port Harcourt, the British named Port Harcourt, and the Calabar. They have seaports. They are closed, they are more upon them. Nothing is happening. But you went to Kaduna and built a dry port. And you claim that you are in one Nigeria. You want to defend one Nigeria. You're a Biafran. You are a Jo. You are a Bibio. You are Igbo. You are a Fik. You are a Nigerian. Are you where? Is your are your faculties functioning at all? Anybody who is familiar with my dealings with the damnable Zoological Republic will know this. I have always placed this as a demand. In case you come out to say, oh, uh, but uh, this, this thing you're doing is an evil thing. I want to tell you this this evening. I, I speak evil sometimes when I'm on air because I grew up in the village. I did not have the contamination of being brought up in the township. I was brought up in the village. That is why I love my land the way that I do. That is why I love my people the way that I do. Some of the things we were exposed to, as those that grew up in the village, those of you born in, the, in townships did not experience it. You cannot love Biafra unless you are blessed. That is a fact. Did you go to the stream? Did you play? Did you go hunting? What did you actually do in a township, living on top of a stinking gutter in Lagos? What do you know? Absolutely nothing. That is why this, people must follow this lecture very carefully, write it down. People talk about bringing the wealth home, Akurula, all this nonsense. 
I have always argued that Wari Seaport must be open, the water seaport and Calabar before they have any discussions with me. When they look at my paper, they run away. Well, I was in prison. Go and ask them, they still have it till tomorrow morning. I don't need to go to worry to consult them to know that that is what they need. I don't need to go to you to do, for them to know that that seaport opening means a lot of employment opportunities for our people. I don't need to go to Calabar to preach to them because all these areas are parts of Biafra. If I speak to you, but sometimes you have to forgive me. As I said, I grew up in the village. I'm not a pro dog. And I'm not a product of a warped township mentality. I'm not part of that. I'm not. Some of these ignorant fellows that talk about Akurulo divesting our businesses and bring them back to the Afro land as if we can just, how can you build a viable economy without good roads, without railway system, without international airport, and without seaport? Just tell me how, is it, uh, how can you do it? Please uh, enlighten me. But you see, uh, there is a, an, an adage where we come from that people I have to put that in English. Uh, we don't know how to put that in English. Uh, so it sounds very um, so people can understand what I'm saying. You see, before you talk about economic growth, there are things that underpins it. Before you build a skyscraper, you must think of getting water to the toilets that are on the last floor of a tall building. So at least you can flush the toilet, not carrying bucket and climbing the stairs. You must make sure the lift is working, isn't it? So it's not you just wake up and one morning and you start to build a skyscraper without making provision for a lift, for a regular power supply, and to make sure that the water gets even to the very last floor. That's what we will do. When you talk about bringing investments back home, through which roads? Where are the railways? Where is the airport? Where are the seaports? Uh huh. Now you've seen it. So all that Akurulo nonsense has fallen by the wayside. It's just a, a jingoistic gimmick that um, badly educated people talk to themselves about to make themselves look good. What we need is beer and freedom. Forget all that rubbish, Akurulo nonsense. What we need is freedom. Without that basic freedom, all your business models will collapse overnight. Simple as ABC. Injustice after injustice has been meted out to our people with nobody rising up to organize, I repeat, a philosophical and ideologically consistent mass resistance against it until we come along. I'm not saying others have not come before us, they have come. But the test is this philosophical and ideological consistency over a period of time tested unwavering we don't waver we remain the same unwavering morning after night the same don't care about what idiots say where we are consistent our reward how did they reward IPOB is the betrayal of our Hanese, Ibo Governor Samuel Fulef is working for you, and the poverty to poverty stricken fellows that lack the discipline to understand what freedom fighting is all about. The mission of these misguided slaves is to turn our land into another Kwara state, or Lauren, to be precise. I say this all the time, with all due respect to Yoruba people. The reason why I fight the way I do, and I fight saboteurs when I see them, is this. If you allow them, what Afon did in Yoruba land will happen to us. Fulani will enter and they will never live forever and ever. We are doomed. We have failed. Look at Middle Belt, what's happened to them. You can see it very clearly in the Middle Belt country. That they are lost. They are gone. Their lands will never ever be recovered again. It is gone and gone for good. What a state is gone. A law in Yoruba town, so to speak, is lost to Fulani forever and ever. So anytime I see a saboteur and I begin to chase that sabo away from our land, shout and scream that this is a saboteur. It is because I don't want what happened in Ilorin to be replicated in anywhere in Biafala. That's all. I don't hate anybody. Why should I want to become a victim of Fulani Caliphate? 
It's kind of like in our lifetime. The mission of these people is to turn us into, I mean, our and their cohorts. They want the land of the ancient people to become another vassal for an caliphate with Muslims in charge, the same way some Yoruba Muslims are today. Uh, guiding and controlling reasonable and sensible Yoruba people. Look at it now. Because Tinubu must work with the Kaba. They are all Muslims. I have nothing against them. But that's the way it is. And he will sell the whole of Yoruba land in order to make sure that he gets into power. The same thing Afonja did in, uh, and, and lost a lot in. The same thing, there is no difference. That is why when the and, uh, and their group step out of line, we keep screaming. Because we don't want what happened to other people to happen to us. Do you think Tufani will leave um, TV land? Is that what you think? Or some parts of Jukun land, is that what you're thinking? That one day they will pack and they will leave? Do you think Tufani will leave Southern Kaduna? You are dreaming. Of course they will not. That is why we don't want them to enter into our land. Never, ever, ever. And that is why everybody must work assiduously hard to ensure that Biafra is restored. That's the only thing that can save you. If Biafra doesn't come, we are gone. Completely gone. Well, I'm just warning you. To appreciate what the future holds for us without IPOB, Simply look at what non Fulani Islamic populations are going through in the Middle Belt. You appreciate what shall become of us in a few years' time if we fail to do something now by supporting IPOB with all our might. Only IPOB can save you if you like, you can't try, you will see it. Things have gotten so bad to the point that our hands, Obi and Ugu and Umahi and Ibazu. That we are at the forefront of assisting their foreign masters in tagging IPOB a terror group and now impotent before foreign terrorists invading our land on a daily basis, slaughtering and maiming at will. Ironically, this is the most funniest part of it. It has been left to the same betrayed IPOB to step up and defend our communities under attack in Ebony, in Enugu and in Anambra. Have you heard of any governor speak out against the Fulani headsmen attack and the killing of their people? Of course they won't speak, and as I told you, they will not speak. You can go and suppose you like, but I warned you that they will send you down the river. When they come killing you, they will not say anything about or do anything about it. The same way that uh, Fulani headsmen are of uh, Yetiala, Makba, they are not here about them killing people. Have you seen or heard from any of Tinubu's uh, newspapers or TV station condemn it? Of course not. Because his eye is on 20 whatever, 23. That's what concerns him. The same thing with your governors. What is the next time they want to be in office to be collecting allocation? That's what we, they can kill all of you. They don't, they don't give a damn. And when I say these things, some idiot will say we are using fear to hold on to our people. I am giving you the facts. What IPOB is doing is to sacrifice itself for the betterment of yourselves and your children. That's what we are doing. Nothing more, nothing else. Our people must know that our land is under attack on three fronts. You know Fulani terrorists what they are doing already. We all know that. But I also want to tell you this evening that they brought in an 18-man squad and attach them to every government house in the southeast. Listen carefully. The inspector general of police, they thought this was secret, but of course we have the best intelligence in Nigeria. Of course we do. IPOB has the best intelligence in Nigeria. Or should I say within that geopolitical contraption called Nigeria. They sent an 18-man execution squad to each state, to Anambra, to Ebony, to Enugu, to Abia, to Imo, 
to work directly with the governors to carry out summary executions of any young man seen outside after a particular time. They did so in Aba two days ago. We have the videos and we have the pictures to prove it. That is what they are doing. They are killing our people secretly. This 18 man squad came from the office of the Inspector General of Police with the blessing of the Nigerian army, Bratai, the Fulani ruling caliphate, to come to our land with permission from our governors to execute anybody. It doesn't matter if you're IPOB or not. Once they see you outside and you're young, they suspect you, they take you, and they eliminate you. It's happening right now, so speak. Therefore, I say to their friends, wherever they are in Biafra land, anytime you see army and police, in an unmarked vehicle, not any vehicle, but in an unmarked vehicle, make sure that vehicle is burnt because they're the ones killing our people. They are killing our people. We have the videos to show you. And in fact, I want those pictures circulated tonight and the interview of the survivors. Three ran away, they shot three dead. You can see the pictures for yourself or for yourselves as the case may be. This is what is happening in our land. From the inspect Fulani Inspector General of Police into our land. To be and do you think BBC will talk about it? BBC wants us dead. Britain owns Nigeria. And uh, whatever they say goes. They will say these troublemakers from 1900. When we came to colonize you, you said no. You were fighting us. Now, you also want to fight our servants, the Fulani. Britain will say no. That is why BBC will not report it, AFP won't report it, CNN won't, I'll just say, no, of course they won't. Because they have a very formidable lobbying system, which we shall get to later. Evil governors and their traitors within, this bunch of criminals are in the business of covering up the atrocities of the Flaming Masters against our people. They work hand in hand with the zoo police and media to spread falsehood about IPOB, an example of which is the death of a man that I brought from Lagos to Enugu, Anthony Moko. I fed him and I paid his house rent. I did. I did from prison. After careful and thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding the demise of Anthony Moko, it became apparent that Anthony Moko was not murdered. The journalist working for some newspaper that first broke the story that Moko was found in a pool of blood was a police, a Nigerian police sponsored writer who was paid to present fantasy as fact. Now, since they want to blackmail IPOB, ask yourselves this very simple question. If Anthony Moko was murdered in a pool of blood, where is the photographic or video evidence of it? Police, now when they go to an incident of crime, they take pictures of the crime scene. So if they arrest anybody and they go to court, they will present the crime scene to the presiding magistrate or judge or whoever decides to hear the case. Where is the picture of Moko in a pool of blood? A journalist wrote that Moko died, was hacked to death. Then my question to the journalist is this. Where is the picture? Where is the picture that you saw as a journalist before going to print, before writing anything? What background check did you do? I think it's now becoming very clear what their intentions are. These are saboteurs working for Zoom, for Zoom media. That's what they do. These are informants for DSS. They are trying to complete the assignment that go and give to them. Give them some money. They will destroy themselves. They will destroy whatever good thing that they, that they have planned against Nigeria. That's exactly what they're doing. I kept quiet all this while because I wanted the idiots to disgrace themselves first. I was the one feeding Anthony Moko. I got him a house. None of you did. I got him a place to stay. None of you did. 
Now you want to raise money that is dead. <laughs> How hypocritical of all of you traitors. Shame on all of you. Show me a picture of Moko in a pool of blood. Show me his body with one blood stain on it. That's how evil all of you are. You will not go scot free, all of you, from one to. Uh, 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 how many of you? I think you're about um, um, 22. You won't go free. I'm telling you the truth. Before heaven and this very earth, you will not. You will not pay very dearly for this. Trying to tarnish the image of IPOB is an unpardonable crime. You will all pay very dearly for it. Very, very dearly, I assure you. No police autopsy till date. The police themselves said, we are investigating the circumstances. If Anthony Walker was murdered, don't you think that the police would have said so? Did they say he was murdered? Show me one police statement from Enugu saying Anthony Walker was murdered. It is all these DSS informants answering to one useless, non existent Biafra group or the other. All they do is the issue statements. That's all they do. Press statements. That's all. They don't hold rallies. Nobody knows who they are. And I could. That's all. They just, you see, that is all. Now you love Anthony Walker more than myself. You loved him, you never fed him for one day. You loved him, he was homeless, he never paid for his husband. He was hard to get in a pool of blood. Where is the blood? Where? Where is the mother weapon? Where is the body of Woko in a pool of blood? Children of Lucifer. Chukwe Kukadiam will punish all of you, one after the other. The whole world is, is listening to the very broadcast. You know me very well. If you want to sing it to the God, I, 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 I join you there immediately. You want to have a civilized debate? Of course. We can have one. But trying to work for Zoo DSS in Enugu, trying their best to disorientate IPOB structure, you are wasting your time. We will find you, all of you, one after the other. You know the way it is. Ask the Zoo and I will tell you. No traitor will go unpunished. Not one of you. I can assure you of that. I'm saying before the whole world, so they understand. When the as I was talking about the dry pot in Kaduna, they are going to be under one at Ibadan. Look at Ibadan. Look at Lagos. Two and a half hours drive after building a dry pot in Kaduna because. Um, you know that um, Fulani and Yoruba, they are now in charge <laughs> of everything happening in the zoo. Whereas some idiots are in their fall and writing and talking rubbish. When Yoruba and uh, Fulani have divided up everything. This dry port will cost $250 million. Where would the money come from? It's not from the oil and gas. In Imo State, in Abia, in Anambra, in Ikoreland. All across the Afrika land. Is that where you will come from? And the port that you have in Wari is not open. And you think IPOB is your problem. The port in Iwacha is not open. You think IPOB is your problem. The port in Calabar is not open. And you think IPOB, you are insane. Your brain is not correct. It's not functioning very well. You know me, I, I prefer to wash my dirty linen in public. I don't wash it. There's no time for closed door. Is in public, so to be clean. That's how I do it. No seaport functioning in our land. And you don't want me to honor those that fought and died for me. When Nigeria is still cheating me till this very second, and you claim you are an intellectual, you're educated. You are a fool, complete idiot. Some people under the control of Al Mustafa. <laughs> you know Al Mustafa is now based in Newport. Some of you don't know. He lives in Port Harcourt. Newport. Al Mustafa. The one that uh, killed Abiola is in Newport. Anyway. That's where he's based. The Abacha henchman. The assassin for Abacha is now based in Newport. Al Mustafa. He wants to be president of uh, Because he, he's full of now. He can be anything he wants. A former killer. 
There's the one remoting some of these idiots that has Biafra attached to their names. I'm, I feel sorry for Biafra, honestly speaking. Controlling them. I feel sorry for them. These are the people that will beat their chest to admit walking towards one Nigeria and foolishly channel their grievance against the semi PAB that is trying to save everybody, including their useless selves. But it was not a boyfriend or an evil man for that matter that killed Cancer. Neither was an evil man that killed Adakabo. It was not an evil man that ordered the flattening of Odi. But why is it that the Yoruba that supports Fulani hegemony gets everything they want now they are having a dry dock in Ibadan? Only two hours away from Lagos, from the seaport, mind you. But there is nothing in South South, nothing in Southeast. So can you tell me on what basis do you love one Nigeria? Just explain that to me. On what basis? Please enlighten me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know. Enlighten me. On what basis are you campaigning for one Nigeria? Oh my goodness. Yoruba gets everything. Uh, those of them from the coastal region of Biafra, they, they, they support Fulani, but they get nothing. How sad. How very, very sad. Do you know that a mega new seaport is being built in Padagri, in the same Yoruba land? Yet, uh, what is closed? If oh, is closed, you call it, let me say, Port Harcourt, so you understand. Calabar is closed. Calabar seaport is closed. So the Yoruba will get a papatin can, they will get a, a dry dock in Ibadan, and also a mega seaport in Badagri. Four! But you have none. And you're talking about a corolla relocating uh, down home. You have to get Biafra first before you do anything else, or else you're wasting your time. You are wasting your time. There are those that um, are the, what I call the Fulani approved elites in the South South Hands. You know, because, uh, you know, when a Yoruba newspaper tells you who your elite is, then you know who a traitor is. But if they tell you to hate somebody, go to that very person. That person is a good person. You know, you have the approved list <laughs> of, uh, of Sabu and traitors that they call your elites. Uh, very sad indeed. These are the idiots who will not fight the oppressor, but they are comfortably happy to accept crumbs from their masters from the north to fight IPOB that is fighting to liberate them. I have never and will never collect anything from anyone to sell or compromise our puritanical stance because unlike these stomach infrastructure agitators or commentators, I will sacrifice anything to get the Afra, but they cannot sacrifice no, not even one strand of hair from their head for the Afra, no? And they know it. I also want to tell Hanese and Pandev and Igbo governors tonight and every other meaningless settle me and my boys group out there that our problem is their lack of patriotic discipline and weak mindedness. IPOB has gone way too far in this effort to restore Biafra than to concern itself with what traders are doing. And the right and the people will take care of you. You know that. There is, is, is a certain ring of inevitability about it. Fighting for Biafra liberation now is arguably the most difficult thing anybody can think of or dream of doing. Because of the high levels of cynicism, because of the details of the past, because of a rather slightly complicated, you know, outlook on life, but I will have it no other way. I prefer it this very difficult way. So that when it comes, uh, every generation will talk about us. That's my happiness. That's how you achieve immortality. Not that you will not die. The flesh will perish. But as what they said in a very famous movie a few years ago, and still resonating today, 
said is that what you achieve in life echo in history. Our race is against history. Not with mere mortals. Not with those who are too poor to think outside the needs of their stomach. They are so poor. All their concerns are how do we accumulate wealth? That was why they approached me at DSS custody. I said no. Could you prison? I said no. But in my own house, I said no. Biafra or death. Moko. Go, go. The jihadi Islamic Karawa call not have given 100 billion to Mijeti Allah. A bunch of killers. 100 billion. And compare them to Ohaneze. And all you can do is to try to discourage our people from sitting at home to honor those that died. That's your contribution. You are being cheated in broad daylight, being compared to terrorists, and all that bothers you in life is how to dishonor those that fought. And some of you claim that you fought in the war, which is a lie, because every veteran, every true soldier is standing on that of men. I was in the war and I fought as Okuasi, Okuasi. You never fought anywhere. You didn't fight anywhere. Because that is why General Makato said, old soldier never dies, they just go away. If you have fought for Biafra before, you should be fighting for Biafra now. Not telling us nonsense. We shouldn't remember those that fought for us. But England can. Osuba can travel to Rwanda to go and commiserate about their, their genocide victims. And I should not honor six million people unjustly killed. It's a shame, a very big shame, to the old eastern region, Biafra land, how the north have, over the years, kept messing us about. They take one of you, we give you all your contract, buy you private jets, you buy a potato in this way, you'll be talking rubbish. Talking nonsense, okay, you go, slave. I don't know why I have this um, this uh, uh, urge to keep referring to films and historical tonight. I want some of you to go, and this is, that is why sometimes people don't understand the mindset of the Caucasian, of white people, why they're successful and most others are not. I want them to go and read about the story of the Spartans, the 300. Of Leonidas, King Leonidas of Sparta, that met the army of Xerxes in Greece and fought a war. He knew he was going to die with his men, but he still fought. And he died in that very war. Today, we are still talking about Leonidas. Till tomorrow, we still talk about him. That is immortality. And our own time is coming. And as I said, that's who I will come to it. And heaven knows I'll bring hell with me. Have I said anything before I've not done it? You shall see. History will talk about us. That I assure you. It will. We are being messed about from pillar to post after using the Okora was at the dumb thing. I told you, you served them, you come back in disgrace. Very clean and clear. Everything I say is gospel. If I say it here, it comes to pass. Everything, the 400 people now killing you, I said it in 2015. Uche for my deputy, very able deputy, you will play all the old brokers. So that the world may know that I'm a child of Chico Gabia. Anything I say comes to pass. You will see it before your eyes. The Kurawosa has been disgraced all over the place. And he's an Awosa man now, just like he's answering an evil name. The they've disgraced him. Our global effort 
to create a network of friends for Biafra in the event of any conflict is proceeding according to our plan. We must get this straight. Everything we do, we do it in such a way that we maximize the sympathy and goodwill of the international community at the appointed time. This is not buying and selling. Freedom fighting is more or less like um, a production enterprise. Not buying, not you go, you buy, you sell, you see profit and you see then No. You need to plan very well. We, I, I am very, very conversant. I'm very, very aware. I studied why we failed before. And that is why we can never fail. That is why IPOB is in fact till today. And before our enemies forget, we are the largest mass movement in the whole world. On the target, we'll prove it to you. Because our plan is steady and methodical. We know what we're doing. We lost in 1970 because we had no friends. This time around, I'm making sure that we have as much friends as possible. If not in the open, at least covertly. That is the essence of what we call diplomatic offensive. We need as many friends as possible. After all, that was how Gowan defeated us with Fulani before. The Arab League was on their side. The OAU was on their side. Britain arranged Europe for them. Also gave them Russia. Nixon that should have helped us, the then President of America, obviously couldn't do anything because Britain said this is our sphere of influence. So you need friends before you do anything. Look at Ambazonia. Why are they suffering today? UN can come up, oh, UN and Ambazonia, for we are, Biafra had the same thing. You need to cultivate reliable friends and allies. I shouldn't be telling you this, but uh, we are Republican, and want everything in the open. So I'll give it to you. That's exactly what we are doing. We plan everything stage by stage so that each step that we take, takes, of course, brings us closer, ever closer to Biafra. But our enemies don't understand it, so they get confused. They are wondering, but why couldn't, why am I not doing it? Why him? Why them? Because Chukwu Kikabiyama did not appoint you to do it. You are a child of darkness, a child of Lucifer. Your heart is bitter and deep, dark and cold. That is why our network of friends for Biafra is proceeding according to plan. I studied the mistakes of the past and will never repeat them. Biafra needs friends in high places, either covertly or in the open, before we march, or else uh, <laughs> what is happening in Ambazonia or the fate of the Tamil Tigers will befall us. And I don't want that to happen to us. After all, I'm, I'm well read. Why go to school if you don't learn anything? We've learned from the mistakes of the past. And this generation of IPOB will not repeat. Never. You can't repeat it. Never. So we know what we're doing. We have a lot of powerful enemies. This is something we don't understand. We think that Biafra freedom is a magic wand. You wave it and it comes to Vanat. No, it wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because as we progress, we begin to uncover a lot of enemies that we have. Quite a lot. We have a lot of powerful enemies. Locally, even locally as well, we have to contend with the concerted treachery of Ohanese, Igbo governors and some affiliates in Lagos and Abuja. Internationally, listen to this. Every media organization is against Biafra. I say all of them. How much can we give to them? We lobby and lobby and lobby. No way. Because Zoo has all your money. How much can you give them? I'm talking about international media, not, not Zoo media. The international lobby machinery of the zoo is well resourced with limitless supply of money. They have bought up lawmakers in the EU. They have bought up lawmakers in every major country of the world, including Israel. Do you know that? So in the course of our discussion, of our meeting people, a lot of these things began to come to light. So you think that uh, the, the, the unwashed dirty alamajri you see is your, no, 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 no. There are people outside working for them, using our oil money. You don't know that? Most of the diplomats serving in Nigeria today, in Abuja or in Lagos, are in the pay of the Nigerian government. That is why 
Fulani can kill as many as possible. I, I'm telling you now, they can decide to wipe out an entire state. If you ask any lawmaker in Europe, as I've been doing, they'll tell you, oh, but it's farmer and headsman clash. It's for water resources. That's what they will tell you to your face. <laughs> because they have been paid very well. They have been paid very, very well. And uh, no access to international media. You've not noticed? There were serious killings in, um, in Mali on Sunday in a church. A church was attacked in Mali. Have they reported it anyway? Did they send correspondents on the ground to, to give them live feed of what is happening? The answer is no. Dead case closed. We are fighting against a very strong state and non-state actors. That is why it appears as if sometimes we are very, very cautious because we don't want to, be, but we are making tremendous progress. I assure you. Let me give you a very simple example. Do you see how many years we've been in the court with the zoo? Do you see how quickly they prescribed IPOB? How long it has taken them to even acknowledge our appeal? Until today, that appeal hasn't been heard. Every time they, they, they adjourn to October of that year, October they will adjourn to June. June they will adjourn to October. So you've not noticed it. And meanwhile, they're saying, oh, IPOB is a prescribed group. They will want to go to court to prove we are not. They won't even let us. We have a, a case at Echoes Court that has been dragging on for nearly four years. Have you forgotten? No judgment. No ruling on that very case. We have a case against the zoo at the Africa Co African um, Human Rights um, Commission. They have asked Nigeria to supply them information to you today. That is going on. Nobody cares. We have a case at ICC. You will all recall the effort that Britain is making the allocation of the head at ICC. Do you know that? Some of you don't know what we encountered. Some people think that if you come to social media, a coach in you, if you talk rubbish, somehow, uh, uh, miraculously, Biafra will emerge. You need to do the very difficult and painstaking hard work. Without it, if you march, you'll be crushed. Before you come to us, go and study history very well. What happened to the Tamils? What is happening to Ambazonia today? You can learn from it. The only way Ambazonia can survive is if they're prepared to sustain this war for at least 20 years. Look at some of you. We are only agitating. You've come to Sabo overnight. Imagine when we have to fight a war with the zoo for 10 years. What would you do? Do you think you can survive it? You can't even survive ordinary uh, uh, media, social media war. Is it war you will survive? Foreign powerful businesses that have benefited from lucrative oil deals and road construction contracts from the federal government of Nigeria are all against Biafra. That is the truth. These barriers and obstacles is what we are working night and day to dismantle. That is the essence of my visit. Not all of them that I make uh, public to all of you. Some of the work is not seen. Neither am I at liberty to announce them on air. Some of you may not know this, but I'll tell you tonight. You know multi-choice, DSTV, that some of you have in your homes? They refuse to carry Radio Biafra on their platform. They refuse to carry Biafra Satellite TV. They we are told in plain English, ask DSTV, they will tell you. In fact, tomorrow some of you should ask DSTV, why, why, why are you not carrying Radio Biafra signal? Huh? You hear what they, what they will tell you? Nigeria said they will shut them down if they try it. DSTV. That is the extent of, of opposition we encounter on a day. And without information, what can you do? Yoruba used this information now to twist your brain. That is why most of you go to Yoruba Pentecostal churches. These were former Muslims, all of them. And they all from all from Muslim homes. They, they saw that you are very gullible. And they used their media to twist your brain that they perform miracles and uh, Instead of following them. And you lost your senses from there. That's the truth. And that's what I speak here on Radio BF. The Nigerian government threatened to shut down multi-choice. That's DSTV. 
When I address the Biafran family in the USA and Canada in the coming days, I will expand on this. I am touring the US and Canada to spread this very gospel and hold some very critical and important meetings there as well. And I'll be traveling with my wife also, that you may know. Without a high level of international exposure and contacts, our rallies in Biafra land will continue to be attacked. Do you think if Sky, Television, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, Press TV were to be in Biafra land covering our rallies live, that brother will give the order, we will give the order for the army to shoot? Do you think so? The answer is no. And the world will see what is happening. So there is a grand conspiracy against us. Some of you don't know what is you do. You have no idea. But anyway, because some of you are sabbatical, you know, you know, you know <laughs> your concern is to, is to undermine the efforts to, to liberate you. And tomorrow you'll be complaining that a mosquito is biting you, there is no light. How many other freedom fighting outfits in the world are called secessionists? Misprints or rebel rousers? None, as I tweeted. Only IPOB, and you know why? Because the Yoruba media, they don't want to address the issue of liberation, of self-determination. So what did they do? They said, the best thing for us to do is to rubbish Nam the Kano. Let's rubbish IPOB. Let's call them names. They are mistrans, they are rabble-rousers, they are, they are con men, they are fraudsters. Because they know if they engage you in the proper debate, you will defeat them. And because they have media hegemony, TV, they are there. Satellite TV, they are there. They have more over 200 radio stations. When they keep repeating all these things, you as a Biafran and your natural envious nature, it will be dripping slowly unless you're a hardcore. You know hardcore IPOB. Nothing, nothing ever penetrates them. Very hard and very I, I come and I salute them. I'm telling you the truth. I salute IPOB. That is why I love them so much. Very formidable. They keep feeding you. They are, they are, you know, they, they call those street urchins. Uh, every name in the world, our consistency, our refined approach to freedom fighting put them all to shame. They don't have anything to say anymore. It is, um, uh, they, and somebody asked them, but, um, did he steal anything from you? No. Did he take money from the government of Nigeria? No. Where is he a con man? Uh, because, he, because he promised Biafra and Biafra hasn't come. <laughs> uh, goodness me. Oh dear. <laughs> so that is what they do to you. They cannot fight you on an even keel. So they use what is called uh, the property of brainwashing, drip, drip effect. And then you go to the Pentecostal churches and they, they, they finish. When, when you come out of their churches, you'll be shouting one Nigeria one like a, a deranged demon. That's what happens to our people. But we are very formidable and resident. And I said it. We are consistent. That is why we're the largest in the world. Others are just, uh, they don't exist. It's just uh, two or three people. They're meeting the Bia Palo. They coin their name for themselves and they start, uh, they write to the media house and give them uh, 7,500 naira and, and ask for change. And you see their name on this way, you think this is them. No, they don't. They don't. Only IPAB does. Only IPAB does. These informants have no business being in IPAB because if you're an evil person with time, you'll be discovered. Your conscience will drive you away from us. You cannot stay. Because you are evil. You can't stay. Start to do with republicanism and uh, I have to free to do what? It's when you, are, you get your freedom, you begin to talk about making sure we have proper democratic structures in place to sustain a civil society the way we want it. Not now. Because enemies everywhere are seeking to use you and some of you fall for it. Yeah, some of you are very good gossipers anyway. All you need to, to do is to keep 
feeding your cell to send junk all the time and it goes into your brain and you take off. I'll give you an instance as to how bad the Yoruba media is and, um, and the work that the saboteurs and traitors within us are doing for. I'll give you a very simple example. The invasion of my house on the 14th of September of 2017. It was an invasion not authorized by any court of law, therefore it was illegal. They came and they killed 28 people. 28 of my men died. But you know what they did? After a while, not even a while, after a while, you know what they did? All of you now, I'm sure, hundreds, if I even million, you've forgotten that my house was invaded without provocation. And the people died. What you're focused about is, oh, oh, but he ran away. He's not there. Come back to Nigeria and lead the struggle. Do you see how clever they are? And they keep feeding it every day. If you, they keep writing the same junk, the same junk on the 60th, you have now forgotten that 28 people died. That my parents are not at home. That we don't live in my house. You've forgotten all of that. Because that is how, that was how, the, if you're asking, some people argue with me to say, oh, how do you know that Yoruba media got me to Yoruba Pentecostal churches? I say because you don't know about it. But I'm giving you a very simple example with myself. That was how the, you, you see how they cleverly moved your mind away from the issue. Instead of you to hold brother responsible, you are now moving away from it and talking about something completely different. That's how they do it. This is a very clever media trick. And that's how they got some of you, unfortunately. But not the hardcore, because we remain and we continue to move forward. Look at the spats, the issue between El Rufai and Tinubu. The time now is approximately four minutes <clears throat> to the top of the hour, to nine in Biafra land, and the same number of minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. We are live and direct, and I know we have overrun for some of you complaining about data. You can listen to us via our radio or through Facebook as well. I think it's, it's far more cheaper that way for some of you. If it was an evil man, Having issues with El Rufai or Tinubu, they would have burnt our shops in Lagos or in Kaduna. I'm sure you are aware of that. And nothing will happen. Or unless they won't even issue a statement. No governor will. All these Fulefus, they will not. Have they complained? Did Ohanese say anything about the killing of our people at Hanan in Anambra State? No. Did they not say anything? No. Did the Igbo governor's forum, South Africa, did they say anything? The answer is no. Because they are evil. They don't love you. They pay the media to teach you. Uh, the is causing problem for us. This is the Afro of a thing. This thing that they are doing. As if you don't know we are fighting for all of us to be free of the damnation that Nigeria has become. Why we must all sit at home on May 30th? Our quest for freedom started not just 60. Not in the 60s, nor in the 40s, nor even in the late 20s. Our quest for freedom started from when the British landed and we resisted them. From that day till today, we are still fighting to be free. After our Chuku fell, we moved to Anioma to found Okumeko. Fraternity to fight in a guerrilla war against the British. This is the reason why Britain lost us. Britain will never trust me because throughout their encounter in West Africa, the only people that have resisted till today still the same people, the same Biafras. I hope now you're following. We are born with freedom in our DNA. 
That is uh, something says uh, Republican Republicanism. The which some have turned to foolishness. Uh, if you want to cover your 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 sabo life, you say you're a Republican. Oh, a traitor. I, I, I'm 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 a Republican. <laughs> we did not wake up one morning to hate Nigeria. Nobody did. They have always hated us. In November 1929, the British killed our mothers in Amba. And after slaughtering us uh, in Arochuk, they killed us in Amba. Because our mother said they would not pay their punitive uh, uh, taxes. Then we, uh, they were imposing on us through one uh, Warren Chief Okungu. This year is the 90th year, if I'm not mistaken, of that slaughter. And also, and we have you, you intellectuals, so don't, don't forget that you are intellectuals in Igbo land, in Ethic, in Bibio, in Anna, and everywhere. Because if you look at other women's rights, they were mostly led by women from Bibio and from Ethic. The fact that it was done in Abad does not mean it was done by, by Ngwa women. No. The room came from Ekotek Bene, from Uyo, from Kalaba, from Ekon, from Eket. They came to Aba to protest. So they start today. And these are our mothers. They gave birth to us. And we carry their genes. That is why we are protesting till tomorrow morning. Until we are free. Now, I'm sure you are not beginning to understand it. So, IPOB is not populated by crazy people. Unless you are saying our mothers in 1929 were crazy women. Our fathers that fought at Harochuku were crazy people. Or that they could make are crazy people. Now, you are beginning to get the picture. After the people fell, they could make came up and we fought them. Compare that to the British takeover of Fulani land or Hausa land that is now taken by Fulani people. There was no resistance. None was, that's why the British loved them. Uh, Fulani never gave them any problem. Fulani said, Take everything you need, whatever you need, we can give you. But they had nothing, of course. Only hide and skin and, uh, and granite. And that's all, that was all they had. Very poor people. The reason why you got Amagamedes north and south was because the north was very poor. Is in the report, go and read it. Some of you don't read very well, but I, so I recommend that very Lugadian report for the perusal of some of you who are, um, I think, is in their need of some knowledge about this youth called Nigeria. Poverty. That poverty is still there till today. The British hate us because we are we are we are we have a resistance mentality to tyranny is still with us till this very day. That poverty that Lugard saw and Amalgamated North and South is still in the north. That resistance that the British saw, that Lugard saw, that made him to hate Gafans is still there till tomorrow. That should tell you something. That should tell you something. You know, DNA, we have freedom. Have you forgotten that our dear <laughs> British also, they gave us Anglican Church. Oh. That, that's what's part of it. Anglican means uh, English. That's what it means. Anglican Church. Where some of us were unfortunately baptized. I would say out of ignorance. The same people that gave us Anglican Church turned around to be killing us. The same people that gave us Anglican Church turned around to be slaughtering us or encouraging Fulani to kill us. And they killed our fathers at Enugu, November 1949. Who was the problem this time around? One bystander was killed and 15 people injured. Nobody remembers them. These people were those that gave birth to the uh, nationalism that resulted in the, in the zoo you know, being uh, rid of the British. Our men at Enugu, 1949, history will not, because after the war, history was written by European people. 
You know, Fulani can not write. So I was, uh, have you have you read any textbook before written by Fulani man in your primary or secondary school? Which book have you read written by Fulani or Awosa man? Please tell me because I don't know. Yoruba wrote our history for us. In Enugu, you don't remember your your. You, do, you, do you know that our fathers died in Enugu? No, we, we don't. We are busy doing several work <laughs> for the zoo. You're being informant for DSS. <laughs> That's your job. How can you know? How can you know? Our people. I am traveling all over the world to convince all the anti Biafra forces like Britain and some countries in Europe. I will do the same thing in the US and in Canada. Biafra is not against anybody. We will welcome inward investments into Biafra because I'm an economist, so I know these things. Without inward investment, we can't grow. We are full blown capitalists. Therefore, nobody has anything to fear from Biafra. Our people are being steadily marginalized, victimized, kidnapped, gruesomely murdered, enslaved across Nigeria to the point whereby, do you see how our brain functions? Even denying us the chance to vote in Lagos, in Abuja, in Kaduna, and some people are telling me that they believe in one Nigeria. Why you were denied the right to vote? Hey! We must continue. Biafrans have over the years sacrificed a lot for the restoration of Biafra. We continue to make these invaluable sacrifices up until this very day. Persecution, assassinations, brutal murders. But we must continue until their friends restored. Because everybody who has fallen in this very effort to remember, so will their family for eternity. That I assure you, that if we can remember those that died in 1770, I remember our mothers in 29, and our fathers at Enugu in 49, <laughs> that should tell you that we can never forget all the main sacrifices we have all been making towards the restoration of Biafra. Come Thursday, the 30th of May, 2019. 30th of May. Biar friends at home, we sit at home in Biafra land, and those in the diaspora will tell the whole world who we are. We will honor them, both the living and the dead. We will recognize their priceless sacrifice for Biafra restoration. Our sit at home will be total lockdown, complete and total. If you come outside that day, you have yourself to blame. The Biafra Restoration Project is insurmountable. All IPOB family members must therefore maintain high degree of discipline and defiance. We have come very far. There is no going back. For Biafra will come, and there is nothing our enemies can do about it, because this project is ordained by heaven. Chukwukikabia must sanction it, and we shall see Biafra in our time. I thank you all very much for listening. From me, from here, it is good evening.